Today we are taking you along our process of making apple cider vinegar. And this one is going to be a first for us. We've never done this. We went ahead and purchased some apples from a local orchard. They're organic apples, so they're a little bit smaller, really, really beautiful, and they are a good variety for making apple cider vinegar. I don't quite remember the name of the variety that these apples are. It's a few different kinds. They all look the same because they've been sitting in our root cellar for about six weeks, so they do store wonderfully down there. Eric and I hope to have our own little mini apple orchard one day so we can go out there and pick our own apples, but for now we're going to start with these. And we are going to get two products out of these apples today. We are going to be making apple cider vinegar out of the peels and the cores, and then I'm going to be turning the main portion of the apple into applesauce. Let's talk about why we would even want to make apple cider vinegar. Maybe you're not a big fan of it. So in our house we are a huge fan of apple cider vinegar. We use it for everything. Besides the digestive benefits and the immune benefits, we also give it to our animals on regular occasion, including our chickens. We can use it for household cleaning products. I use it for my skin and my hair, and you can also use it for eating and drinking and of course canning recipes. So let's go ahead and dive in and talk about how the process of making apple cider vinegar works. It is a two-step process or two-stage process for the fermentation to happen and it takes anywhere from four to six weeks so it does take a little while to complete this. We're going to be starting with the apple cores and peels and adding a sugar water to that and what happens is wild yeast comes along and it changes the sugars to alcohol so that's our first stage and at this point acetobacter which is a bacteria comes in and changes that alcohol into acetic acid which gives apple cider vinegar that vinegary taste that we're all used to. Some of the things you will need is apples and sugar, of course. We're going to be using a five gallon food grade bucket to be doing this process in. You can also use a different type of container. We just bought this one specifically for it since we plan on making quite a bit and a way to peel them. We're just going to be using an apple peeler. And I might add that you can use the whole apple to make apple cider vinegar. We just also want to make applesauce and we don't really need the meat of the apple to make the vinegar. And that's why we're just using the cores and the peels. We're first going to get started with prepping these apples. I'm going to peel them and come back and get the cores out. Next, we need to prepare our sugar water to add to our apple peels and our apple cores. And we want to use a one tablespoon to one cup water ratio. I don't quite know how much I'm going to add in here, so we're going to see at the end how much we use. This is the last little bit of water we ended up adding in. We ended up putting about 20 cups, so that means 20 tablespoons of sugar, and I just stirred in that sugar with room temperature water. If it's not completely dissolved, that's okay. This is what you want it to look like. You want the water to barely cover the cores and the apples, and if I actually push down on them, I can tell that it is covering them. What we need to do now is put some sort of weight on top so we can keep all of that underneath that liquid. I'm going to be using a plate since that's all I have, and then we'll be setting our top back on, and I'm not going to actually put the top back on all the way. I'm going to allow a little bit of air because we do want this to be able to breathe. Since the plate is floating up a little bit, we are going to put this mason jar of water on top of it to help weight it down and make sure it stays down there. We've got a lid on this just in case I don't want extra water in that brine. And our lid will fit perfectly over. Now the next step is to let this sit for two to three weeks and we want this to sit in a warmer room temp area in a dark place. So just a closet or something like that. I'm gonna be throwing it behind us in our kitchen in a cupboard and just checking it every so often to make sure it doesn't get any sort of mold. It may get a little bit of like a scum on top and that's okay, you can scrape it off or you can leave it and you'll probably see a little bit of fizzing. The other thing we're gonna be checking is to make sure that all of the contents stay submerged. 
So we will see how this looks in a few weeks when we come back to check on it. We're back with our apple cider vinegar project and we are on our second phase. This has been sitting for about two and a half weeks and you can smell that it is slightly sweet and a little bit alcoholic. So we've done that first stage and now we need to strain the apples. And at this point the alcohol is going to be turned into vinegar so we will end up with apple cider vinegar. So let's go ahead and get started in straining this. This was our weight that I'm gonna be taking off. You can see there's bubbles and that is totally normal. That's actually a really good sign that this is working the way we um, want it to. So we're gonna get this strained. And we're gonna be giving the mash to our chickens. I'm gonna get this bin rinsed out so we can put the liquid that we just strained back in here. That smells really good. I'm going to be putting the cover back on and we are going to put this back in the cupboard that we had it in for another three to four weeks. And at this point we actually want to be giving the liquid a stir every day or every other day. We will check back in a few days and see how this looks. We are back in the kitchen with our final product. Our apple cider vinegar is finally done. We are actually in February, so this whole project took a lot longer. We first started this back in September and the first step took about two to three weeks and the next step I was only anticipating it to take about one to two months and it ended up taking about three to four months for us to have a finished product which I'm going to talk to you guys about but I want to show you what it looks like. So we lost a little bit of liquid due to evaporation but that's the final product and there is some of the yeast strands on the bottom that's that cloudiness and we are going to be saving that of course. Let's talk about why this process took longer. So this was our first time making apple cider vinegar and I had to research a little bit what was going on. For the second stage of the process, I put this in a cold cupboard in our kitchen and it was just too cold. So I didn't realize that at the time we let it sit down there for about one to two months and I was stirring it every other day to get that air mixed in there for this process to take place. And I realized it just still smelled like, you know, sweet alcohol. It smelled really good, no mold, nothing like that, but it wasn't getting any sour and it wasn't getting more vinegarish. So I just figured let's give it some more time. More time went by and still nothing happened. So I researched it a little bit more and I found some information indicating that it needs to be kept warmer. We went ahead and moved it up to our loft and a few weeks later we did notice some changes going on. So I would recommend keeping this for the second part of the fermentation at, at least 70 degrees and that's what we did. Our loft is about 80 degrees. We opted to let it go to the four month mark because ours we wanted it to be you know a little more concentrated, a little more vinegary. So we are finally there and it's totally okay if it takes a few months just know that ahead of time I wasn't aware of that when we first started it like I said before this process is done so we are ready to bottle it up I have two bottles behind me that we're gonna be using I think it'll fit in both of them we may have some extra room in these and you can cap it off at this point too since it's not actively bubbling anymore we're gonna go ahead and pour this out into a bowl first There's that cloudy, those are the dregs. Before we get this bottled up, Eric and I thought it would be fun to compare this to the store-bought apple cider vinegar I have behind me. So this is one of the brands that we buy and it does have, you know, the mother in it too. We were aiming to get our pretty strong like this, although we were starting with sweeter apples. I don't know if they were quite the best choice for apple cider vinegar. Very, very strong. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it's there's definitely vinegar in there, but it is not quite as potent as this one. And again, from what I've read, the longer you let it sit, the more of that will take place, especially if you're stirring it and keeping it in a warmer place. We're okay with this as is. Looking back, I may have done slightly less water and just covered up the apples a little bit less, squished them down when we were back at that first point. Another thing I wanted to note, if you try making apple cider vinegar for the first time, I did read that you can jumpstart your batch at its second phase 
with some apple cider vinegar that's store bought. And again, you want to use the, you know, the organic kind with the mother and it will just help jumpstart your batch. Or you can even save some of this for the next time that you're doing it. And it's going to help that process happen a little quicker. So we already filled up this one. I wasn't expecting that. That's good news because it did take so long to make. And from what I've read, this has an excellent shelf life. We are going to be putting these down in the root cellar, so keeping it a little cooler. And I anticipate that they'll be fine down there. I bet we'd probably use them up in a year because we go through apple cider vinegar quite a bit around here. It's a favorite of ours. But you now know with what we started with about the ratio you may get at the end. You may have a little more evaporation. We're going to be ending up with about three of these 64 ounce bottles. We have these bottles left over from when we used to brew June tea, which is a kind of kombucha. So I'm going to be using these to do the last bit of it. So I have just one more of these to fill up. And like I said again, I think that this is going to last us quite a while. I would totally do this again. I recommend it. It was simple, not time consuming. It just takes a little bit of time for the process, especially in our colder house. So again, if you have a warmer area, why not go ahead and place it there? It's definitely economical and it's, you know, good high quality vinegar too, because that's, that's what we like to buy, you know, for the purposes we're using it for. That is the kind we need with the mother. So it just makes sense to get the apples. Hopefully they will be our own apples in the future and do this process. And I hope you guys found this helpful. Maybe you will be interested in making vinegar or maybe you already have. Let me know if you have any tips or suggestions in the comments and we will see you guys next time.